welcome to lecture number 7 of module 1 in the previous lecture we have introduced ourselves to uh, how to determine different types of Atterberg limits having determined Atterberg limits and also understood about uh, arriving at the grain size distribution with the help of this data it is possible uh, to classify the soil so in this lecture we will try to see uh, the soil classification systems which are widely used and then we discuss about some salient aspects uh, with reference to the limitations of Atterberg limits and all. So this uh, lecture 7 is about the soil classification. So if you look into the Atterberg limits, we have liquid limit, plastic limit, and shrinkage limit. If you try to see the engineering use of liquid limits, they are often used directly in specifications for controlling soil for use in fill materials or any other application. I used for predicting also activity of the clay. The activity of the clay is defined as plasticity index over is the ratio of plasticity index or a percentage clay passing to micron. So this uh, Atterberg limits are used for predicting the activity of the clay or frost susceptibility also. The plasticity index, the plasticity index indicating the magnitude of water content range over which the soil remains plastic and the liquidity index indicating the nearness of a, a natural soil to the liquid limit. If the liquidity index is close to the liquid limit, that means that it is uh, almost, uh, you know, in a fluid state and are particularly useful for characteristics of the soil. So these are used for classifying fine grained soils. Atterberg limits are very much useful uh, for classifying fine grained soils. Further, greater the liquid limit, the greater the compressibility of the soil. Some soils exhibit very high liquid limits, for example, bentonite has got very high liquid limit and greater the liquid limit, greater the compressibility. And liquidity and the consistency indices are good indicators of the consistency of the soil. So if you have a soil which is actually having a low consistency index, that means that if you have a consistency index of 0.4, that indicates a soft state of the soil. So the limitations as far as the Atterberg limits are concerned. The Atterberg limits give no indication of the particle fabric or residual bonds between the particles which may have been developed in the natural soil but are destroyed in preparing the specimen for the determination of limits. As you all know, we do the liquid limit test on a remolded sample which is actually passing say 0.425 mm C or, or 425 micron. The Atterberg limits give no indication of the particle fabric or residual bonds between particles which may have been developed in the natural soil. So the bonds which are actually existing in the natural soil may might not have been represented in the uh, you know liquid limit test but are destroyed in preparing the specimen for the determination of limits. So this is one of the you know limitations of uh, you know Atterberg limit or you can say that the limitations in determining liquid limit test. Uh, we also discussed it that with the help of uh, uh, Atterberg limits, we can estimate or uh, say assess the activity of the soil. So the plasticity of a given clay depend upon the nature of the clay mineral, so the type of the clay mineral, the amount of the clay mineral present. Based on the laboratory model tests, laboratory tests for several soils, Skempton 1953 made the observation that for a given soil, the plasticity index is directly proportional to the percent clay size fraction. So a relationship between uh, plasticity index and percent clay size fraction present in the soil was actually uh, presented in by Skempton in 1953. So which is defined as activity is equal to plasticity, plasticity index over percentage clay fraction where pi is equal to plasticity index and c is the percentage uh, clay size fraction by weight. So activity 
a c a suffix c is a function of type of clay mineral present in the soil so acuity is used as an index property to determine the swelling potential of an expansive soil so if you know the acuity it is possible to uh, you know assess the swelling capability or uh, expansiveness of a given soil so in this table different acuity values of minerals are given the sodium based mantuman light can have acuity values in the range of 4 to 7 calcium mantuman light can have acuity value up to 1.55 ilite has 0.5 to 1.3 kaolinite will have low value 0.3 to 0.5 halosite hydrated can have 0.1 and quartz acuity value is 0 so the acuity value of a sand for example Uh, which is predominantly having quartz can be zero so acuity value of the minerals like sodium mantuman light is very high and when it comes to illite it is 0.5 to 1.3 and then kaolinite 0.3 to 0.5 the clay minerals with kaolinite a stable clay mineral will have low acuity that's what we have discussed in the previous slide whereas those soils with mantuman light known to be subject to large volume changes depending on the availability of the water will have high acuity values so the soil classification can also be made based on the the ranges of acuity values when the acuity value is less than 0.75 the soil is classified as inactive as far as uh, uh, you know expansiveness is concerned 0.75 to 1.25 it is classified as normal clay and greater than 1.25 is classified as active clays the same in another graphic graphical version which is actually shown here the classification of the soil according to activity where on the x axis we have percent finer than 2 micron that is passing 2 micron which is actually plotted in percentage on x axis on the y axis we have plastic plasticity index so the soils which are actually falling having activity values here uh, they are actually potentially susceptible to expansive nature and here they are actually say like light type of clays they fall here and the kaolinite type of clays they are somewhere here in this light you know according to c et al 1964 they have presented uh, the uh, investigated about the plastic properties of several artificial blends of bentonite kaolinite uh, and uh, kaolinite bentonite in different uh, blends and it is presented here with uh, plasticity index on the y axis and percentage clay size fraction on the x axis so here activity value as high as 5.4 is reported here so It, uh, it according to c et al 1964 the activity is uh, defined suggested that they have that uh, pi divided by percentage clay size fraction minus c dash where c dash which is the correction which is uh, given as suggested as 9 so with this the you know this uh, the particularly the plastic properties of several artificial blends of uh, bentonite and kaolinite uh, yields that the relationship between activity and uh, uh, plasticity index and percentage clay size fraction is modified as a is equal to pi divided by percentage clay size fraction minus c where c dash is equal to uh, 9 now coming to the soil classification systems classification systems generally group together broad categories of the soil that have similar features or properties which are considered to be of importance for many projects it is required uh, to identify the soils which are actually having uh, identical properties or broad categories of the uh, you know proper characteristics of uh, broad char broad characteristics so as a result a classification system is not necessarily an identification system in which all pertinent engineering properties of a material are determined but however it can uh, work out as a guideline for uh, 
uh, you know selecting the material and investigating further by based on the uh, classification which has been made. So, because of this, the soil classification should not be used as the sole basis for the design or construction planning. So, classification systems are generally they group together broad category of the soil, categories of the soils that have similar features or properties which are considered to be of importance. So, the soil classification system should not be used as the sole basis for the design or construction planning. The requirements for a satisfactory engineering classification systems include limited number of groupings. So, it is uh, required so that the system is easily to remember uh, and use. The symboling has to be simple so that the uh, classification, uh, the limited number of groupings and then the, uh, the system is easy to remember and use. So, grouping should be on the basis of only of a few similar properties and generally similar behavioral characteristics. So, if the grouping is made, the, the group should have soils which are actually having similar behavioral characteristics. And the properties and uh, behavioral characteristics should have meaning for the engineering use and construction pro process, profession. That is related to soils handling characteristics, shear strength, volume change characteristics and permeability. So, the two important requirements. Uh, which we have discussed in this slide. One is that limited number of groupings and properties and behavioral characteristics should have meaning for the engineering use and construction profession. Thirdly, the descriptions used for each grouping should be in terms that are easily understood and are common use for indicating the soil type and its properties. As a fourth point, fourth requirement, classification into any grouping should be possible on the basis of visual identification limited to grain size distribution and atrobug limits without special tests or equipments. So, if we have the data of uh, grain size distribution and atrobug limits, so the classification uh, into any grouping should be possible on the basis of the simple test that is particle size distribution data and atrobug limit test data. So, the fundamental idea of the soil classification system is the collect the soil samples from the field. It can be at different depths and different locations and perform easy and inexpensive tests on soil samples, typically grain size distribution tests and atrobug limit tests. Based on the results of these tests, classify the soils in question. That means that whatever the soils which are in uh, which are uh, tested, they can be in the class to uh, help uh, classify the soil in question. And based on the classifications of the soil, whether or not be appropriate for the identical intended usage can be uh, uh, guessed. If yes, perform more extensive lab tests on soils as needed. So, if the soil particular classified soil classified in a particular group is suited for particular application, then perform more extensive lab tests in the soils as needed. So, historically the most widely used method of classifying soils has been through visual identification and the size of the soil grains. So, we have uh, different sizes bulk particles, uh, bulk size ranging to flaky particles to uh, very plate shaped particles. So, some of the particles cannot be seen, but visual identification will allow uh, to some extent then size of the soil grains and plasticity of the soil being used as the basis for indicating the soil types. For example, if you have silt and clay, uh, they, uh, there is a possibility that uh, you know uh, sometimes it is required how to distinguish between silt and clay. They, this is possible with some uh, identification methods like which is suggested here uh, to distinct between uh, to distinct between silt and clay. So, if you look into this uh, plasticity, the silt will have low plasticity and clay will have high plasticity. And uh, if uh, these equal amount of soil which is oven dried and air dried is uh, dispersed in a jar uh, having uh, water, then silt settles rapidly and uh, the clay remains in suspension even after 24 hours. And uh, dilatancy that is reaction to shaking is high for silt and low for clay. So, with this is possible to distinct between uh, silt and clay and the dry strength 
the soil which is silty soil the resistance to breaking is very uh, low and uh, clay in the dry state some clays where, uh, uh, where they were having high plasticity characteristics they have very high woven dried strength. So, the this is a function of plasticity colloidal fraction content of the soil that is that which is actually having very fine fines which are actually more than uh, 2 micron if it is high and so this is uh, this particular distinction between silt and clay is uh, possible with uh, the simple methods which are actually suggested one is by plasticity other one is that uh, sedimentation rate and dilatancy and dry strength. So, which is a basically a function of plasticity and colloidal fraction of the soil. So, the classification of the soil can also be done by basis of the grain size. In the previous lectures, we have actually discussed that soil which is regarded as uh, you know uh, which is uh, which is less than 4.75 which is actually called as sand, silt and clay and uh, the ones which are actually greater than 4.75 and less than uh, uh, 20 mm which is uh, uh, called as gravel and above that uh, is uh, 20 to 80 mm and then a more than 80 mm as cobalt. So, here um, the classification of soil on the basis of the grain size according to Bureau of, Bureau of Indian Standards 1498 is shown here and the particle sizes which are actually uh, indicated here they are in uh, millimeters. So, the clay which is uh, uh, less than uh, 2 micron that is 0 0.02 mm is uh, uh, regarded as size as the size of the soil particles which are actually less than uh, 0.002 mm is regarded as a clay and uh, we, uh, uh, the size of the soil particles which is less than 0 0.075 and greater than 2 micron or 0 0.002 mm is regarded as silt and uh, in the sand we have fine sand which is 0 0.4252 0 0.075 mm, medium coarse sand it is 0.4252 2 and coarse sand as 2 to 4.75 and then we have gravel and then uh, we have cobal according to un so unified soil classification system which we are actually going to discuss in uh, in length. So, the, uh, more or less the division is uh, identical where you have uh, the particles which are actually more than 19 mm gravel particles which are actually which can occur in the soil which are more than 19 mm they are called uh, uh, bulk size particles. And, uh, uh, this uh, the one uh, the classification which is actually shown here all uh, resembles almost equivalent to the the BAS 1498. And in this slide, uh, uh, the classification of soil on the basis of the grain size according to ASTM, that American Society for Testing and Materials, and where they classify anything greater than 4.75 as gravel, and uh, between 0 0.075 mm to 4.75 mm is classified as sand which is actually similar to the previous two classification systems of a soil on the basis of the grain size and clay which is actually regarded as uh, 1 micron to 5 micron and a silt which is recorded as 5 micron to uh, 0 0.075. And according to British soil classification system which is actually shown here as uh, gravel which is actually more than 2 mm and uh, sand particularly here 60 micron micron to uh, 2 which is actually regarded as a sand and a silt and then clay. So, uh, different classification systems adopt different uh, 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 you know size limits for the soil, but uh, the anything any soil portion or a fraction which is passing uh, 75 micron or 0 0.075 mm is called as percentage points which is actually having uh, uh, great relevance uh, in, uh, in influencing the engineering properties of the soil. So, the soil classification uh, methods if you look into it there are two types of methods uh, widely used there are many methods, but here in this uh, we are limited to uh, ASTO classification system and other one is the unified soil classification system. The soil classification is basically the arrangement of the soil into the various groups or subgroups to provide a common language to express 
briefly the general usage characteristics without detailed descriptions. So, by knowing the particular group, it is possible to uh, guess how the particular uh, characteristics can be. So, the soil classification uh, aim basically is to uh, it, uh, arrive at the arrangement of the soils into various groups or subgroups to provide a common language to express or briefly to uh, uh, address the usage of the characteristics, usage, general usage characteristics without detailed descriptions. So, by knowing that uh, or seeing that group, we will be able to assess the soil whether it is more permeable or whether it is more compressible or has got high compressibility characteristics or uh, has got uh, uh, high plasticity characteristics, etcetera. So, the both the systems what we are going to discuss Astro system and unified soil classification system. They use uh, uh, simple index properties like grain size distribution uh, data and liquid limit and plastic limit properties of the soil. Now, let us discuss uh, Astro classification system and this considers both texture that is uh, GSD classification system and uh, uh, GSD uh, grain size distribution data and Atterberg limits. This was originally proposed in 1919 and the system was last modified in 1945. Widely used for highway and transportation engineers and this is performed on the part of the soil sample that falls in the, uh, in the gravel to clay size range. That means that it actually classifies the soils uh, and puts the soils in different groups uh, based on uh, in the sizes ranging from for the gravel to clay size range. Once the group classification has been found, so uh, here a group classification is uh, arrived uh, based on the properties which are actually uh, used from the uh, grain stress distribution data and Atterberg limits data and uh, it is now uh, this uh, reference uh, index which is actually uh, used in this particular classification system is named as group index which is indicated as GI and this is used to uh, compute further uh, classify the soils. So, if you have the uh, high value of the group index that in that in that in indicates that the uh, soil so particular soil it has inferior characteristics. So, in the uh, the uh, astro classification system divides the groups into soil groups into A1A, A1B, A2, uh, A2 to A4, A25, A26, A27, A3, A4. So, A4, A5, A6, A7, 5, A7, 6 and A8. A8 is basically, so total 8 groups uh, and then there are some subgroups within, within it. And uh, uh, here, uh, A8 is uh, some uh, for the soils like uh, which are PT or mucky in nature or organic soils are put based on the visual uh, uh, identification, they are put in the uh, A8 group. So, the group index for the uh, in the ESTO uh, classification system uh, for the groups which are actually uh, A3 and above, that means that A3 to above can be computed by using this particular expression G i is equal to F minus 35, F is nothing but the percentage of soil sample passing 0 0.075 mm sieve that is 200 mm sieve uh, plus 0 0.005 into LL minus 40 bracket N plus 0 0.01 into F minus 15 into P i minus 10. So, here the plasticity index was used and percentage fines was used and uh, so with this the group index parameter can be obtained. Similarly, for the soils in A1 to A1 or A2, the group index is given as uh, 0.01 into F minus 15 into P i minus 10 that is only this component is defined. So, generally this is the widely used and uh, once this is used and uh, suppose if you have a P i is equal to 10, then that means that this uh, particular uh, component will become 0 then we have only this component. So, in both the formulas what we see is the F which is used in the percentage of the soil sample passing 200 sieve or 200 number sieve or ASTM uh, 0.075 mm sieve. So, the GI which is nothing but a function of uh, grain size distribution, shape and surface area. The group index which is, so the group index is that uh, which is uh, depend upon the surface area. So, uh, higher the surface area, 
then the group index can uh, get affected. The shape that is uh, shape of the soil particles and then grain size distribution data. The astro classification system in uh, GA means uh, what we are doing is that rating of a soil as a subgrade material within the within its own group. As I said that this is actually developed for highway and uh, highway constructions. So, the rating of the value of the soil as a subgrade material within its own group. Higher the value of the GI, poorer is the quality of the material. That means that higher value of the uh, GI means the soil can actually has uh, uh, low load carrying capacity characteristics. The useful hints in the classifying the soil, once we have the grain size distribution and atropic limits data, always uh, begin on the left hand side with the A1A group. So, once the, the chart which actually uh, A1A group, when one, once we uh, uh, eliminate A1A group, then go to A2 like that and check each of the criteria. If any criterion is not met, uh, step to the right and repeat the process. So, the chart which is actually not given, but if you have a chart, always begin on the left hand side with A1A group and check each side, each of the criteria. If any criterion is not met, then step to the right and repeat the process. Do not begin at the middle of the chart. Suppose, in order to complete the classification hurriedly, do not begin the classification in the middle of the chart. Now, let us take uh, one example problem, example 1 uh, with, uh, uh, with the astro classification system, whatever we have discussed. So, in this uh, problem, the percentage passing 2 mm uh, uh, size of the particles that is uh, passing uh, number what terms, number 10 sieve is 10 percent, 100 percent. That means that all particles are actually finer than this uh, particular 2 mm size. Percentage passing number 40 sieve that is 0.425 mm size is 80 percent and percentage passing number 200 sieve is 58 percent. That is percentage fines are here 58 percent that is F is equal to 58 and liquid limit is 30 and plasticity index is 10. Now, the group classification based on the chart is evolved as A4 that is from the chart if you use from the chart data you will get with the data whatever the limits which we have with that it is classified as A4. Then by using the equation which is actually given for group index determine for F is equal to say 58 and uh, with plasticity index is equal to 10 we will have that second component of that expression will become 0, then g i is equal to 3.45. That means that g i is equal to 3, then hence the group classification which is indicated as A4 that is obtained from the chart based on the data which is presented here and uh, 3 within the bracket which is indicated as 3. So, this indicates that which is classified, this uh, interprets that this particular soil which is actually having these characteristics has got fair to poor subgrade rating. Coming to the example uh, which is uh, percentage passing passing through uh, uh, passing number 200 that is uh, 95 that is passing 75 micron sieve is uh, 95 percent and liquid limit is 60 percent and plasticity index is 40. Now, having uh, run through the chart, the group classification is obtained as A76 and uh, determined with F is equal to 95, G i is 42. So, here uh, the 95 that is percentage finds percentage, the percentage is actually taken as percentage and then computed G i is equal to 42. Now, you can note this G i which is actually obtained is very high. So, the group classification is indicated as A76. Uh, which is uh, written as A75, but it is A7642. That means that this is uh, uh, the rating which is actually understood as poor subgrade rating, the poor subgrade rating. The limitation if you look into this, the limitations are that the criteria for the groupings are logical, but shortcomings include requirement for a laboratory, laboratory testing. In order to determine a classification and the difficulty in using the code designation and remembering the requirement for each of the designations, somewhat these groups are difficult to remember. The criteria for the groupings are logical, but shortcomings in include the requirement for a laboratory testing 
and in order to determine a classification and the difficulty in using the code designation. So, the code designation is mainly uh, you know has difficulty in remembering and unless uh, we look into the interpreted results it is not possible for us to understand about the uh, interpretation of the behavior of the soil. Now, as I said that the second method which is uh, discussed is the unified soil classification system that is USCS first delivered first devised in 1942 and last modified very recently in 1991. Like the ASTO system it also uses the both grain size distribution and Atterberg limits. What is required is that percentage sa sample which is uh, gravel size fraction, sand size fraction and silt and clay fraction and uniformity coefficients we have discussed that Cu is equal to D60 by D10 and the coefficient of gradation Cc is equal to that is D30 square by D60 into D10. So, once we have the data uh, and liquid limit and plasticity index on the portion passing 0.4 to 5 mm C. So, once we have this data it is possible to group the soils which, uh, uh, which are actually having the identical characteristics. So, let us see the what will be the classification procedure which is adopted in the unified soil classification system. So, determine the percentage finer than 200 uh, uh, sieve that is uh, 0.075 mm sieve that is if percentage finer passing uh, 75 micron is less than 5, 50 percent then go to step 2. If it is greater than uh, or equal to 50 percent go through step 3. So, what is in step 2 is that uh, the coarse fraction is nothing but 100 minus uh, percentage passing 200 uh, C. So, if percentage if F1 is uh, is the percentage passing passing 4 number C that is 2 mm, but retained in uh, uh, 75 micron C that is sand. So, if F1 less than R200 by 2 then the coarse fraction is more gravelly than sand. That means that if F1 is less than R200 that is uh, which is nothing but 100 minus uh, F200 which is actually given above and if F1 is less than R200 by 2 then the coarse fraction is more gravelly than sand and if, one, if uh, F1 is greater than R200 by 2 then the coarse fraction is more sandy than gravel. The step 3 is nothing but that is actually addressed by using uh, Casagrande's plasticity chart and that helps us to uh, you know classify the soil based on the uh, Atterberg limit test data. So, uh, this unified soil classification system is uh, uh, originally proposed by Arthur, uh, Arthur Casagrande in 1942 and revised by the uh, Corps, uh, Corps of Engineers and US Bureau of Reclamation in 1952 and recently in 1991, widely used by various organizations, geotechnical engineers in private uh, consulting business and building codes. So, the unified soil case classification system divides the subdivides the soil into the following heads. One is that soil is basically divided into three predominant types, one is coarse grain soil, other one is fine grain soil, this was discussed earlier. Then in uh, PT type of soils which are actually organic soils having peat or muck nature. So, they are actually divided in subdivided separately coarse grain and fine grain soils and coarse grain soils are predominantly gravel and sand and fine grain soils are silt inorganic clays, organic silts and uh, clays. So, we have fine grain soil which is predominantly divided into silt, inorganic clay and organic silt and clay. It is also known as Casagrande's extended classification system. So, the two major divisions which are there, a soil is coarse grain, gravelly or sandy, if more than the 50 percent is retained on a uh, 200 mm sieve, that is uh, 200 to, uh, on a 200 number sieve that is 0.075 mm or 75 micron sieve. As a fine grained soil the silt and clay if more than 50 percent is passing through a two, uh, 200 number sieve that is classified as fine grained soil. So, if percentage fines is more than 50 percent which is passing then is classified as a fine grained soil. 
So, soil is further classified by the number of subdivisions with primary and secondary characteristics. So, here uh, the following symbols are used gravel which is uh, uh, indicated as G and silt which is actually indicated as M. The original origin of the uh, name of the silt is the Swedish MO which is uh, silt and S for sand and C for clay, W for well graded that means that it actually has got uh, you know uh, various ranges of the soil particles and uh, P for poorly graded or gap graded and O organic, P, P, T for P, T type of soils or highly organic soils and C well graded with some clay and uh, L uh, which is indicated for low plasticity, I for intermediate plastic, plasticity and H for high plasticity, F well graded with excess fines. So, this F symbol which is actually uh, used for well graded for excess uh, fines which is not generally comes in the uh, in grouping of the soil, but what you will find is that suppose if you have got a some clay with low plasticity then it can be indicated as a CL or say some clay, some clay which is actually having uh, with high plasticity it can be indicated as a SH or if you have a sand which is well graded in nature then can be indicated as SW and if the sand which is actually having same size of the soil particles or uniform size of the soil particles then it can be indicated as SP. So, the criteria of classification of the coarse grain soils into four groups one is the W well graded, Cu has to be 4 for gravels and Cu has to be greater than 6 for sands and Cc has to be 1, 2, 3. So, here both Cu and Cc have to be satisfied and with fines uh, that is finer than 75 micron and less than 5 percent. So, the it is said as well graded the fines should not be more than 5 percent. And the poorly graded Cu is less than 4 that means that in the poorly graded the slope of the grain size distribution curve is very steep. So, the Cu will be less than 4 for gravels and less than 6 for sands and uh, Cc will be not between 1 to 3. So, so please note down here in case of a poorly graded or gap graded the Cc will not be between 1 to 3 with points again less than 5 percent. And <coughs> C the plasticity plastic clay is fines with the PA greater than 7 with fines more than 12 percent and M non plastic silty fines PA less than 4. So, with fines more than 12 percent. So, fines more than 12 percent, but non plastic silty fines and they are indicated as with M with plasticity index less than 4. So, the criteria for the soil classification of the fine grained soils. Uh, basically, it is done by using the plasticity chart. So, basis of the plasticity chart is that once you have got liquid limit and plasticity index and which is actually plotted then it is possible for you to express uh, to classify the soil. So, the experimental results from the soils tested from different parts of the world were plotted uh, uh, graphically of plasticity index uh, versus liquid limit a plasticity index on the y axis and liquid limit on the abscess. It was found that clays and silts and organic soils lie in distinct regions of the graph. So, this particular chart was uh, arrived based on the data which is actually collected from the number of soils like clays, silts and organic soils and they found that it is found to distinguish this with this uh, with the help of the chart. So, here in this particular slide uh, a Casagrande's plasticity chart is shown here. And on the x axis what you see is liquid limit which is uh, shown here. On the y axis the plasticity index is plotted and here this particular line which is called the A line the equation of the A line is that I p is equal to 0 0.75 into W L minus 20. So, any soil which is actually so if it is it is demarcated in three zones one here and one here and one here. And here this particular zone the soil actually will have low plasticity and medium plasticity and here the soils actually have high plasticity. Any soil which is actually lies above a line is called anorganic clays of high plasticity in particularly if you are having a liquid limit more than 50 and if it is lies below the a line uh, then it is called inorganic silts of high compressibility and also uh, some organic clays are grouped here. 
and here in this particular zone where liquid limit greater than 30 and uh, uh, and less than 50 and here with the plasticity index in this uh, uh, boundaries where inorganic silts of medium compressibility and organic silts. For example, if you have got a soil uh, which is actually having uh, uh, identical liquid limit but have different uh, plasticity characteristics, they are actually classified differently. So, if I have one soil here and one soil here, they are actually demarcated as a different uh, types of. So, here in this zone, um, particularly these are actually for the co cohesionless soils or the soils which are actually having possessing non-plastic or low plastic silts. So, these are actually having plasticity less than 4 or say 4 to 7, they are actually put here in this particular zone. And what we see here the red line which is nothing but called U line. So, any data which is actually falling in this region that means that the test data has to be repeated and this is actually upper bound value which is actually plotted upper bound line. The equation for the U line is indicated as IP is equal to 0.9 into WL minus 8. So, uh, if you have so the mostly all the soils which are actually above this above A line on or above line are classified as inorganic and below are all organic. So, you can see that these are all the uh, some inorganic silts and low plasticity silts are placed here. The features are that the chart is divided into 6 regions, 3 above that is A line delineates the boundaries between the clays above the line and silts and organic soils below the line and 3 below. So, equation of the A line is 0.73 into WL minus 20 and U line defines the upper limit of the correlation between the plasticity index and liquid limit. If the results of soils fall above the U line, repeat the Atterberg tests. And the equation for the U line is given as IP is equal to 0 0.9 into WL minus 8. So, all points representing inorganic clays lie above A line and all points for inorganic silts lie below A line. Points representing organic clays are usually located within the same region as those representing inorganic silts of high compressibility and organic silts in the region assigned to inorganic silts of medium compressibility. So, in doubtful cases, liquid limit should be determined for an overdrive specimen as well as the fresh one. If the decrease in liquid limit is say 30 percent or more, then the soil is classified as uh, organic because of the loss of ignition of the organic matter. So, uh, in the doubtful cases, the liquid limit should be determined for an overdrive specimen as well as the fresh one uh, without overdrying. If the decreases by liquid limit by 30 percent or more than the soil may be classified as organic. Thirdly, as the liquid limit increases, the plasticity and compressibility soils also increases. So, the dry strength of the inorganic soils represented by points on lines located above A line increases from medium to samples with liquid limit less than 30 and to very high for samples with a liquid limit greater than 100. So, let us now club the uh, unified soil classification uh, charts obtained from, from the grain size distribution data and plasticity uh, chart which is actually discussed in the uh, previous slide. So, here in this uh, a, uh, a, a category which is actually defined the coarse grain soils major division is that coarse grain soils percentage passing uh, uh, 200 number 200 C less than 50 and gravels which is percentage passing 4.75 mm sieve less than 50 percent and gravels with little or no fines. So, here with the Cu value greater than 4 and uh, Cc between 1 and 3 and uh, so gravels with this uh, the, uh, range well graded gravels and uh, gravel sand mixtures with the little or no fines is classified as GW. So, well graded gravel it indicates that GW indicates the well graded gravel. Similarly, poorly graded gravels or gravel sand mixtures little or no fines which is actually indicated as GP. So, here the gravel which is actually having almost uniform size particles. So, that is actually grouped as GP. Similarly, uh, Atterberg limits below A line uh, and PA less than 4. So, the silty gravels are gravels and sand silt mixtures. So, if I have a silt which is actually uh, blended with uh, gravel then it is actually indicated as GM. Similarly, gravels with the fines having plasticity index more than 7, Atterberg limits lie above A line, 
then it is indicated as GC. So, here with gravel soil, we have seen that GW, GP, GM and GC. Similarly, here for sand, similar uh, trend we have adopted here SW, SP, SM and SC. Here, this value as I discussed earlier, it is CU value is more than 6 and uh, CC value between 1 and 3. And uh, for not meeting the two criteria and uh, here the uh, here in this case poorly graded and CC value not between 1 and 3, then it is actually said as SP. So, the sand with fines uh, with appreciable amount of fines, silty sands and sands, sand silt mixtures with uh, plasticity index less than 4 and they are actually indicated as silty sand or sand silt mixtures with SM and clay sands and sand clay mixtures is indicated as SC. So, here we have seen that uh, sandy type of soils with uh, different types of uh, uh, gradation SW, SP and SM with uh, some uh, silt mixtures or with the clay sands or sand clay mixtures indicated as SC, the symbol or group which is indicated as SC. And uh, fine grained soils with the percentage uh, passing uh, uh, 75 micron C is uh, greater than 50 percent. So, here uh, according to plasticity chart which is the criteria which is we have discussed when inorganic silts with very fine sands and rock floor and silty or clay or fine sands indicated as ML and uh, there is also a boundary soil which is actually indicated as CLML that means that the doubtful cases where you have got a twin grouping which is called CLML uh, grouping and silts and clay with liquid limit less than 50 percent, inorganic clays, low to medium plasticity, gravelly clays and sandy clays and silty clays, lean clays basically they are actually uh, uh, grouped as CL. Organic uh, soils and organic silty clays uh, of having a low plasticity, they are grouped as OL. So, here for the fine, fine grain soils, uh, we are actually seeing groups like ML, CL and OL. And for the silts and clays, liquid limit greater than 50, which is inorganic silt and micaceous or di uh, diatomaceous and fine sandy and silty soils and elastic silts, which is indicated as MH, inorganic clays with high plasticity and fat clays having high compressibility and uh, high plasticity indicated as CH. So, MH and CH, organic clays with medium to high plasticity indicated as OH. So, here you can see that OH and PT or mulch and other high organic soils is indicated as PT, P suffix, P and small letter T. So, here according to uh, astro classification system, we classify the PT type of soil as A8 and here it is indicated as PT that is the uh, for the highly organic soils. And classification based on the percentage of the fines. So, if the percentage passing number 200 sieve that is 75 micron sieve is less than 5, then it is indicated as GW, GP, SW and SP and greater than 200, it is indicated as G, GM, GC and SM and SC. Between 5 to 12, uh, these are actually called as the borderline uh, symbols. So, they carry dual groups with the, which is nothing but uh, if you have percentage passing uh, greater than 5 and less than 12, then we have G, it can be GW, GM and or GW, GC or GP, GM, GP, SC, SW, SM or SW, SC and SP, SM and SP and SC. So, atropic limits above year line and plasticity index between 4 and 7 are borderline case. So, it needs dual symbols. Atropic limits above year line and plasticity index between 4 uh, 4 and 7 are borderline cases and uh, it requires it needs dual symbols. So, as I said there that is actually on the left side left bottom of the plasticity chart and which is actually indicated as CLML group. So, in this particular uh, chart uh, what you see on on or above A line they are actually called as inorganic clays and below A line they are actually classified as silt or and organic soils. So, the plasticity chart which is uh, here the equation of this is the A line and this is the U line, uh, this is the U line, this is the U line what we have actually discussed. So, here uh, the horizontal uh, for the uh, at P i 
uh, 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 Pi is equal to 4, that is Pi is equal to 4 and liquid limit is equal to 22.5. So, any soil which is actually falling in this uh, zone is carrying a dual symbol that is called CLML and uh, 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 the equation of the U line that is here vertical at liquid limit is equal to 16, that is liquid limit is equal to 16, uh, that is somewhere here and then it actually starts here. So, uh, this is for the uh, you know the U line, uh, uh, U line which is actually shown here. So, uh, any soil which is actually falling above a line and in organic clays, very high woven right stance and very low clay and they have high uh, hard at uh, plastic uh, hard at plastic limit so the soil which is actually having falling on above a line they exhibit high woven right stance and very low permeability what we see the k which indicates that permeability and they are actually very hard at plastic limit and uh, similarly uh, the soil characteristics which are below a line that is in this zone they are basically silts and organic soils, very friable as because water content is close to plastic limit and the lower woven dried strength. That means that the, they possess actually the low over dry, woven dried strength. But similarly, if you see a soil which is actually having identical uh, uh, liquid limit, but which is actually falling in this region can exhibit high uh, woven dried strength. So, here in the uh, here in this particular chart, uh, it indicates that different samples from the same soil stratum uh, of the same geological origin, they actually pos possess or they fall uh, above a line. So, the characteristics, uh, you know, whatever the, uh, the geological origin, uh, they are having identical characteristics. So, they actually fall and then uh, 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 which are we of the same soil stratum and they actually fall here. So, here what is actually is it shows that the compressibility increases, the permeability, uh, the permeability of the soil uh, will be uh, will be very low and uh, so this is uh, you know uh, another additional feature of the, the Kessegger and Day's chart with the soils with the geological stratum, they fall approximately parallel, what you can see the parallel to the A line. So, here uh, basically the location of the common clay minerals uh, in uh, Casagrande's plasticity chart is shown. So, here what has happened is that this is the A line and this is uh, U line, uh, U line which is indicated. So, all the, the three uh, common clay minerals which are nothing but kaolinite, illite and uh, mantamolite, mostly kaolinite basal soils they actually fall below A line what you can see is that that is the general classification which is actually given after the holes and uh, coax uh, is that this one and elites they fall somewhere here and uh, uh, here in this in this zone there is a possibility that here it actually below right below u line uh, it is actually possessing very high uh, liquid lim uh, plasticity index and liquid limits the mantamolite based uh, mineral soils will actually fall here so if you look into this, the kaolinite basal soils theoretically they actually follow fall, fall below a line, elites somewhere here, and then mantamolite basal minerals say somewhere uh, here. And here in this particular uh, slide, Atterberg limits uh, ranges uh, for the subgraded subgroups A4, A5, A6, and A7 are shown here. So, here uh, what has happened is that the U line and A lines are superimposed, the data which are actually shown. So, it can be seen is that A4, A5, A75, they are actually falling below A line and uh, to obtain the ranges of liquid limit and uh, plasticity index for groups A4 to A7 and high organic soils, peats and muck groups are actually placed in. So, the asto groups are actually super, superimposed on the plasticity uh, chart. So, it indicates that here above A line, so this is a soil which is actually having medium plasticity and here which is soil which is actually having high plasticity that is not addressed in astro classification system. So, uh, PT type of soils which are actually indicated as A, H. So, uh, in the example uh, 4, uh, for a soil specimen uh, given passing 2 mm sieve, let us say that 100 percent and passing 0.425 mm sieve is 85 percent 
and passing 200 mm C is say 38 percent, liquid limit is 20 percent and plasticity index is 12 percent. So, we need to classify the soil by the unified classification system. So, here uh, based on the data which is actually given and with the whatever we have discussed, since the uh, more than 12 percent passing is uh, num uh, number 200 C is SMRSC, uh, the plasticity index is uh, 7, so the soil classification can be worked out as SC. So, in this uh, particular lecture, what we try to understood is that we have tried to look into the significance of the atrobug limits, what are the requirement of the users of the atrobug limits and the limitations of the uh, atrobug limits and how we can actually classify the soil based on the activity and also uh, how to classify the soil with the available data uh, with the grain size distribution uh, particularly uh, and grain size distribution of different types of soils and uh, Atterberg limit test data. So, in this uh, lecture we have discussed about two methods that is astro classification system for soil classification system which is actually widely adopted for highway uh, construction and uh, unified soil classification system which is used for the uh, universally. Uh, but however, as discussed earlier, this particular grouping indicates the particular characteristics, but this should not be used as a basis for uh, based on this the further uh, investigations are required to be carried out.